So yeah, uh, so I'm going to explain a bit the internals and how it's implemented, especially since uh, since the last few weeks. Um, now all the uh, classes, so misprevent, misattributes, uh, the objects, um, references, and so on, all of them are represented as uh, mutables. So you can use all those classes are basically dictionaries. And you can access all the information out of it um, from dictionaries. Um, and I will create more classes so you can more easily um, uh, play with it. So at first, I'm going to just show you those ones. So that's me, that's the master class <coughs> for uh, for now. All the uh, all the misp um, uh, the misp classes representing. Uh, Objects in this. Uh, on objects, in, when I talk about objects here, I'm not talking about the new what uh, what Alex is talking about with the misp objects. I'm talking about everything, including events and attributes. Uh, all of them, so as I said, are dictionaries. Uh, they are all uh, you can all export them into JSON. Um, and the way it's implemented is all the classes, all the attributes in the classes. Um, if they don't, if they're not starting with an underscore, they will be exported in the dictionary. So you can just access them um, <laughs> by key, um, which is going to make your life way easier when you want to uh, to play with it. Um, so yeah, and you can obviously um, like write your own class, your own method for uh, for the JSON export. It will be important for some specific <coughs> use cases uh, when you don't necessarily want to export everything or when you want to create a new uh, new attribute and so. Um, so here, so as I said, a misp attribute uh, is um, inheriting from abstract misp, which is a, a mutable class, uh, and all like so everything that is not exported in um, in the JSON blob. <coughs> will be prevented with underscore, and everything else um, will be set as an attribute and exported uh, by default. Um, and it's the same for misp events and for down here uh, for the object reference and for the object attributes. So the thing is. All those classes can in, can import an object, can import a JSON blob, and set it as a proper uh, Python class, which is going to make your life way easier when you want to extract stuff out uh, out of the JSON object instead of just like going through a dictionary uh, manually. Um, yeah. So and here you have the misp object, which is what uh, Alex was talking about earlier. Uh, and that misp object is uh, like a file uh, the, the, based on the template file or based on the template uh, regex or based on the template um, PE section and so on. Um, and all those ones, so they rely on the template definition that is uh, in external direct, uh, external repository. Uh, <laughs> and bundled in PyMisp. So you don't need to care everything. When you install PyMisp, you have all the object templates uh, directly um, imported. And usable. And if you create your own object template, again, it should be a JSON file. You can just install it uh, with your um, your PyMisp um, instance. Um, so yeah, all those uh, all those classes are the goal is really to make it easy for you to load a JSON blob and export a JSON blob without having to care about anything. So that's, that's the idea, that's the internal of how it's implemented. And it, of course, all those functions have a bunch of helpers like add attributes, uh, add tags, and so on. So you can basically play with your, uh, your JSON, uh, your uh, MISP object, uh, add attributes, remove attributes, add tags, and then push it back as a JSON blob to MISP uh, without thinking too much. Um, and the way um, the objects are, um, when, when you want to create your new object, you start from a PE file. 
So you have your P file, this P file is at first a file. So you extract, like can compute, so you compute all the hashes and you want to add them as a file object into MISP. And to do that, um, it's already in the in the core uh, in the core library. It's going to be here and file object. So what you will do is uh, getting so getting the value you want to add in the object. You use the add attribute uh, method, which is going to basically just create a new a new class attribute in your um, in your current class, and you can just then uh, dump it out as JSON. Uh, without like without any anything weird anything else to do. Um, so as you can see, creating a file object, a bunch of a bunch of like tests here, but like it's going to be really small. On this one, if you just write something like that, and you have your uh, your template uh, prepared already um, like as a JSON uh, JSON object. Uh, you will just like load it, uh, add all your attributes, dump it to JSON, and nothing else to do. Um, so it's going to be really straightforward. Uh, at this point, we only have uh, libraries <coughs> for uh, file objects and uh, elf p on Maco, because um, elf Maco on p are supported by uh, Leaf, which is a Python library developed by uh, Quarksurfs. And so it's just, it's really, really straightforward and you can just use it out of the box. So I'm going to show you an example with a P object. It's probably going to be the one you will use the most. Um, so again, I have a bunch of, a bunch of helpers here. I generate all my attributes. Um, and here, a P has sections and we also have a section object uh, template in this. So you can, you get your file extract all the indicators out of the files, uh, go to the PE, uh, PE object generator, extract all the indicators out of the PE, so indicators will be like all the uh, descriptions, this, this description fields uh, in, the, uh, um, in the metadata of the, of the PE. So it's going to be a compilation timestamp, and yeah, product name, and file name, uh, original file name, and so on. All those want to export them, push them into your new class, then you get through each section and extract all the indicators out of those sections. Um, and again, you have here the P section object thing. So again, as you can see, it's really straightforward. You can create uh, and you can automate the extraction of the indicators out of whichever file you want uh, really easily. Um, yeah, so that's the idea for, um, for the object and the way it's implemented in this. Uh, do you have questions on that part of it? Uh, um, I mean, if you are <coughs> going to play with it later and talk to me, talk about it uh, with me in the next few days, uh, feel free to do so. Um, anything yet on that part? Okay. <coughs> so the other thing that Alex uh, was talking about earlier is where is my mouse here. Yeah. Um, and I mean, JSON is nice and so, but um, it's still really painful to do stuff with it um, and to just integrate it if you don't have some helping, some helpers to do, to do so. Um, by Miss Galaxies and then by, by taxonomies, basically they load the JSON blob and uh, represent it again as a um, Python dictionary. Um, so, you can just, uh, so you can just go through it uh, using key values uh, and, and implement it and use it in your own uh, systems. Uh, PyMist galaxies and PyTaxonomies are completely standalone. You don't have any dependency on, on, on PyMist core. Uh, and you can just use them and play the taxonomies as you want uh, in, your own, uh, in your own systems. Which will make sense when you have, when you, if you use MISP as like a hub to put all your indicators in and move them around, uh, having a way to understand to manage taxonomies and the tags from the MISP events into third-party uh, software will be really handy. So that's something that is definitely recommended. And uh, yeah, please, please have a look at it. Uh, and all pink Pinus galaxies also come bundled in with um, all the galaxies. So you can just, uh, you have all the, all the content, all the data is here when you install, if you do pip install Pinus galaxies. So it's going to make your life a lot easier to just to just use it instead of like going through the JSON objects directly. 
Uh, something important to know is that all those uh, JSON documents have schemas, so we also make sure that it doesn't fail uh, every time we do an update, or when you propose, when you want to uh, do a pull request to add new fields and so on, it will make sure that you are not pushing something that is going to be misinterpreted by this. Um, yeah, really recommend it. JSON schema are great. Um, yeah. And PyTaxonomy is again, same, same ID, uh, so I have a bunch of examples here. Uh, the idea is that you can just like load the taxonomies. Again, everything is better in, in the module. You can just load the taxonomies, play with it. You can also edit it if you want, because it can dump back uh, the taxonomies to JSON. So if you want to do some changes uh, with uh, using the taxonomies, using the uh, uh, PyTaxonomies, uh, Py you can do that uh, without editing the JSON file manually. And what will be dumped out will also be validated with the schema. So you can be you can do it relatively easily uh, without using your text editor if you have some specific changes you want to do. Um, yeah, and again, completely standalone. Um, PyTaxonomy is a website. You can also use it to uh, see the um, uh, see the, uh, the taxonomies if you don't want to go like to do it manually. Uh, at some point, as we have schemas for all those, uh, so for the galaxies and for taxonomies, uh, we want to have an easy editor, so you can just go on the web page and change fields and add fields to the galaxies and to the taxonomies uh, without having to edit um, the, the text files. But that's going to be, like, that will happen <coughs> in the future. Um, yeah, any questions on that part? Um, I'm going to just show you then uh, the objects a bit. Mouse again. Uh, <coughs> Jason, yeah, the objects. Um, yeah. <coughs> just if you didn't already look at it, I'm just going to show it to you really fast. So that's how an object is represented. So you just you will just load this one. So it's a template. It has some uh, pre uh, predefined fields, um, and all those fields. So for example, if you go, yeah, all those fields will be passed directly to um, uh, to MISP, and MISP will interpret them and so on. Um, they are all like mostly self-explanatory. If you have any questions about that, when you create a new um, a new object also <coughs> just come talk to us. Um, we are always happy to answer to that. And I can show you. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, when you add a new. Um, uh, a new object into MISP, um, so a new file object into MISP, it will use uh, the same array I showed you earlier uh, to extract all the indicators out of um, uh, out of uh, the file and create an object. So I'm going to create a new event, and obviously it will fail. I mean, I'm doing a live demo, so it will definitely just fail. But uh, anyway, let's give it a try still. So I have a new event, and I am going to add an attachment. This attachment is going to be, for idea, so it's going to be a malware sample. With a pedigree. Oops. And this one, if you if you tick, it's not going to work. This one, no, okay. So I should do this present. Yes, it should be in this case now. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to try and I'm to do it from my own machine. Okay, it's not another thing, this one. So, yeah. So, okay. Um, 
in place. Okay. Um, now, project. So, in all, all those examples are using R parse, so you can just do it this way, and you will, this is going to give you some information on how the um, uh, how the, the example is working. Uh, so, and this one is uh, for four one three. So. And let's um, let's do this. Test times. Let's go to use CMD at exe. And yeah, it's better if it's a pass. So uh, so it's it's uploading it on on Miss uh, Miss Better. Uh, this one will to get the CMD, so get get used as a file, uh, extract all the data of the files of the file, uh, figure out it's a P, extract all the indicators of the P, and and generate also all the um, uh, P sections uh, information. So now I will build the page, and here you have it even work. Um, so <coughs> you have the P section here. Reference by will show you the reference of the P, which is on the same page here. Oops. Yeah, this one here. Uh, so as you can see, P you have like all the same, all the parameters, all the uh, metadata uh, directly expressed out of the file, and you can decide to tick um, to have some correlation. So I already uploaded the same file in another event yesterday because I did a try. Um, and yeah, so you can find out here uh, the same file and the same, uh, the same correlations on the, on the file name. Um, for the file, so you have all the, all the hashes, the type, mem type, um, and you will have somewhere the file itself. Um, yeah, so file. So malware sample, so you can also run the malware sample, I mean, as you always do with, um, uh, with malware. So yeah, as you can see, that's, uh, that's how it's going to work when you want to play with, uh, with objects. Uh, it's relatively easy to write your own modules, um, so you're just welcome to, to contribute depending on which one you want to, to play with. Uh, but yeah, those ones are already implemented, and you can have, you have them directly in, um, in MISP when you install your own instance and you install it. Again, installing Leaf, uh, like Leaf is ongoing progress. Um, at this point, if you want to, to do that, you need to install the beta version. It's going to, like, you need to install it with the trunk uh, out of GitHub. But uh, that's going to be fixed soon, and then we'll just like, release the uh, old eight in a, few, in a few days. So it's going to be way easier uh, to, to play with. Um, it's tested on Ubuntu if you use CentOS for that. Like, there is no support in here. Uh, like installing Leaf, just you do you. Um, yeah, so do you have any questions about that? Uh, yeah. uh, any problems uh, with uh, synchronizing those objects with uh, instances which doesn't have these objects? So the ways I represent it internally are the same as the old format attributes. Okay. It's in database, you just have an extra field. So when it's shared, uh, you will still be seeing all the indicators, but they will just be seen as like one single block, the same one you had all the attributes before. So it will be, it will suck a bit for the people who didn't update, but the idea is to make people update. But it will not, you will not lose any information even if you don't update. Yeah. If they update, they will have the reference in the database or they lose it by import because they don't have the... Yeah. 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 So just, just to reflect that, so basically the way it works is uh, when, you, when you first synchronize before you update, you will get the uh, data without the object. So anything that is contained in the object you don't get until you update and then you get them. So, yeah. oh, okay. so that means the older version mm -hmm. will not get the one that oh, has right. the object. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I so yeah. we don't uh, because uh, the reason is I mean each of the attributes uh, internally the way we store them the only difference compared to the old type style attributes is that each one of these attributes now has a, a, an object ID that it links to which can be zero if there is no if it's not linked to an object 
and the relationship. So uh, if, you, if you look there, for example, where the word SHA-1 is repeated twice, because here the, the relationship type is the same as the type, but that would be the other name for the relationship to the object itself. So for example, uh, I think we have, for example, a text attribute down there that is describing a MIME type, so that the MIME type would be the relationship. So, that, so these two points of data are the only new things. We don't uh, synchronize them with old versions that don't, uh, don't have uh, those fields yet, so we skip the objects. And when they upgrade, they can start getting data with objects in there. So, so the biggest risk, if you run a very old version of MISP, you might end up with an event with no attribute uh, attachment. With no objects, yeah, exactly. Object because it's just yeah. objects. But you still get everything else. I mean, I mean, that was one of the big decisions we had to make in the end. How do we deal with them? And in the end, uh, our decision was to get as much data as you can without one, some good things that you can store it. And by the way, we, do, we also do this way for new attribute types. So if you're staying on a very old MISP, you might miss out on some attributes that, ha that are using new types that you do not have, uh, that you cannot ingest yet. So yeah, the, for that reason alone, we really suggest that people keep up to date. Uh, generally, when, when a new type is out, you won't have a lot of data with, with that type for a few months at least before people start using it. So there's always a grace period, an, an inherent grace period for updating. Uh, I need further questions. Yeah. Uh, what kind of uh, users or on which level will be uh, the, the ability to create those MIS object templates? I mean, it's, it's relatively simple. Like, the way I'm mean, going to show them to you here. And keep in mind, this is something that will be built into the UI. Yeah. So once it's in the UI, it's as simple as creating an attribute yeah. or anything like that. So if you're familiar with the object template, uh, not the object template, but with the templates of this, uh, the UI will be similar to that. I'm not sure if many people use it. I always try to bring it up in the like, Sun Labs, but nobody's using it. But we have a templating system for workflows and for creating events. And the idea is to use this on the UI. Just so drag and drop and do it. But if you can show just, just quickly. I mean, it's, it's that's one of them here. So okay, this so one. I'm just extending. Yeah, and like for, for now, yes, the system is there. Yeah. Oh. yeah, no, so it's it should be um, because like one of the way there is a already a PHP thing. Um, uh, there is a tool. Uh, yeah, I think it's this one. So it's one per like all instances, right? Um, yeah, so the objects are uh, like the directory containing these definitions in a, in a MISP instance, yeah. So should it be somehow approved? Because you don't so, so you, you might have two things. So it's basically you can have objects that are the default one, those ones are in the yes. repository. Between bracket, they are approved. So it's basically those ones contain things that are things that a lot of people are using. Uh, if you have a very, very uh, specific to your business object that you don't want to share, you can create a JSON locally. That's works too. Oh. So you can even, in the case that you don't know, you want to, to have one for I don't know, aircraft, for example, and then no one you share it to anyone, so you can basically create locally. Um, then in the object, you basically approve the one that are commonly used. Uh, I think I never refuse one until now. Or I just, we just usually refine it or improve it, uh, but usually it's, uh, it's, it's how it works. And those templates are versions, so if you modify one, you basically get the new updates for the, uh, for the definition of the schema, and then you can edit with that template to the object. Basically, the question always is, uh, when you create a template, is it something that you want to share with the community so others can use it as well? If not, you can completely keep, uh, keep it local to yourself, and then do whatever. One of the big challenges was, uh, of course, uh, to have a system for the objects themselves to be shareable without the other partners having the template. And in the end, uh, some of the metadata is contained within the object itself, so you never have to worry about sharing the templates unless you really want to let the other party also share data in the same template. So but what technically may happen if I'll have my own um, um, old template with some additional object types, and uh, I'll have um, like synchronization with other instances which <coughs> don't have this. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. They will okay. get your object. The only thing they cannot do is they cannot edit it because they don't have your template. Okay. So basically there's a UUID and a version check. If they don't have the template, they can do some minor editing in proposals okay. such as changing distribution level, IDS flag. 
but they cannot, for example, add additional attributes to the object. But that's about it. Okay. So yeah.